breaking news. On Monday, the 7th of October, we witnessed what some are calling the single most difficult pure on paper Cambridge has ever created. Here's a reaction from one of the victims. Let's take a look. Do you want to know why I'm sitting outside? I'm sitting outside to reconnect with nature because that paper raped me. And if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're part of that onslaught. The majority of students went to Abbey. One thing's for sure, Cambridge was taking no prisoners. Ah, things I do for you people. Ah. From what I'm hearing, this paper was downright outrageous and just flat out ludicrous. So in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the paper and my thoughts on the grade thresholds we should expect to see. So let's get into it. Right after the exam, I put out a poll just to get an idea of how you guys felt about the exam. And let's just say most of you weren't too happy. 42% thought it was that. The other 42% were rendered speechless. So I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. 13% of you thought it was fair and only 4% of you thought it was easy. So I think it's pretty fair to say that this was a very difficult paper. I've put together kind of like a recollection of the actual paper based off of feedback I got from some of you guys. So this is not the actual paper, Cambridge, please don't sue me. And for legal reasons, I will not yet be solving this paper but in the future I definitely will. But just on first glance, you can see that there is a massive shock factor just because of how different this paper is from the other papers. The style and the format is slightly different from your average paper. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure most students didn't struggle with this paper because of the difficulty of the questions, but more so the difference in style and format and just how intimidating the paper looks overall. I mean, for starters, the first question is a trig transformation, which is a really challenging concept to get a grasp of. And don't even get me started on that R and theta question. Whoever created this paper is moving like Thanos. With all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. They would all cease to exist, and I call that mercy. So let's just go through it question by question, and I'll give you my thoughts. Then after that, we'll talk about threshold. Number one, the trig transformation. It's not the friendliest question to start off on. Transformations are quite difficult, let alone trig transformations. And I kind of feel like the first question sets the mood for the rest of the paper. And you kind of get that feeling of like, damn, if this is the first question, does it get any better from here? Albeit it is solvable. I think I had something similar in my guest paper. But just the positioning of it as well, it's pretty intimidating. I can imagine opening the paper and this is the first thing you see. Number two is a lot more understandable. They probably should have put this as the first question in my opinion. I don't think part A caused too many problems. If there were any potential problems, they would be in part B. But even then, it's a fair question. As we go through these questions, make sure to comment down below your experience because the opinion of an outsider like myself and someone who actually took the exam are vastly different. I'm commenting on this from the comfort of my own room, yet you were sweating in the actual exam room. So let me know your thoughts down below. Number three is pretty interesting because at first glance, it looks very difficult. I mean, when have you ever seen an X coordinate of the form 2 plus H? But if you take the time to compose yourself, you can very quickly and easily see that all I'm doing is finding the gradient of a straight line. There's nothing really to it. And that's what I think was the main problem with this paper. It had a lot of questions that were scary on the surface, but if you slowed down and took the time to actually think about it, you'd see that, no man, I've actually done this stuff. But then again, if you slow down, time management becomes a problem, so it's a double-edged sword. Part B is a tricky one. It's basically the idea of gradients of a sequence of chords. Yes, it's in the syllabus, but it's an overlooked concept that I think only a handful of students actually knew and understood. So don't worry about it too much if you didn't know what was going on. Number four, we got a binomial expansion question. It was very much expected. I had something of that sort in my guest paper. Here the main problem I can see is that our B is a fraction. So it could lead to a lot of arithmetic errors because we all hate dealing with fractions. But if you manage to figure out which term was independent of x, I don't see too many problems in this question. The functions question doesn't look too bad, but I've always hated dealing with rational functions. So I can understand if you struggled with that one. But I think for functions, it definitely could have been a lot worse. There wasn't too much focus on the range aspect of things, which is good. The inverse looks doable. The composite function is doable. So I think 
think this one was a fair question. Number 6. I think this question takes all the headlines for this paper. Some are calling it the R and Theta question, others the pizza question because one big pizza slice in between two smaller slices. Regardless, this is a very interesting question and I'll admit, I even laughed when I first heard about it because just the diagram itself sounds crazy. If you really sit down and analyze the question, it's not too bad, like it makes sense. The diagram is still ridiculous, don't get me wrong. But once you start to see what's going on, the steps you have to take seem obvious. Now obviously I'm taking the context out of the situation you're probably already panicking from previous questions time is running out and the person next to you is cruising so that doesn't help your confidence when you see a question like this it's one of those questions that as soon as you see that diagram you skip it straight away you don't even think about it because it's just that bad just a quick note to all 2025 students doing a level math who want to get an a star i only have three slots remaining for tutoring so if you want to get those dream grades i'd suggest you move quickly fill in the form on my website and I'll see you there. Number 7 starts off with a completing the square question, which I hope didn't pose too many problems. I'm actually curious, I've heard that by the time exams come around, most students would have actually forgotten how to complete the square, focusing on the more difficult concept. Is that true? Then part B is area of the shaded region, it's a pretty common question. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a difficult concept. If your integration is good, you probably were happy to see this, otherwise you probably might have struggled a bit. Number 8 starts off with circle geometry, where you're moving from the expanded form to the generic form. Now this is a pretty rare concept, I'm confident that some of you are seeing this concept for the first time in the exam so that must have been pretty rough fortunately it didn't carry too many marks but it's definitely one of those i wise not in the syllabus type questions and just the fact that they added p and q makes it even more difficult it's already obscure cambridge like come on come on bro this paper is giving me don't you turn your back on me harry potter i want you to look at me when i kill you to see the light leave your eyes and then in part b in keeping with cambridge's theme of just doing too much in this paper you know when you see a line and a circle right you're expecting something along the lines of no pun intended but you're expecting something along the lines of find the equation of the tangent to the circle at point a but no no cambridge just had to spice it up find the equation of the normal and then to put the icing on this question, they end it with a 5 mark part C, find the values of P and Q. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm actually angry for you guys. Like Cambridge doesn't like you, this paper was a horror. A pure horror. Number 9 part A is quadratics but there's just way too many unknowns. There's Y, there's X, there's P, there's K, it's just too much. And chances are you're probably tired by the time you get to this question, if you even get to it. So even if you know what's going on, there's a very high likelihood of you making a silly mistake because there's just way too many moving parts. Then part B is an underwhelming discriminant, which I guess is a good thing. Then we close off the paper with a little bit of differentiation and integration. It's twice now, twice that you've been asked to find the equation of the normal in this paper. There's quite a lot of emphasis on the normal for such an abnormal paper. The function that you're working with isn't pretty at all, it's those fractions that just make everything so much more complicated. Part B is a standard find the equation of the curve question. And then to wrap up the whole paper, we've got an increasing or decreasing function. They've actually given a lot of love to this concept this year, which is pretty concerning since it rarely appears, but that just tells you everything. Cambridge will out for blood this year, more specifically in this paper. Anytime you get a paper with only 10 questions, you know it's going to be chaos. And this one was no exception. Honestly, I empathize with anyone who wrote this paper because yeah, ne? it was quite something. I'm very interested in seeing what the examiner's report has to say because Cambridge, Cambridge wanted the smoke in this paper. Naturally, after such a difficult paper, you think, threshold, would the thresholds be favorable? You sure hope so after this madness. Let's see. As I was preparing for this section, I just went over my predictions for the June 2024 thresholds to see how it compared to the actual thresholds. And turns out it was off by one, so it wasn't too bad. Now, given the past thresholds for Pure 1, Variant 2, and Cambridge's move to pre-COVID standards, I'm thinking it's something close to 60. Just in case it's not clear, I'm focusing on the minimum mark required to get an A. The video would get way too long if I tried to predict every boundary, but there's about a 10 mark gap between each boundary. But still, 
I have to take into consideration that a lot of people struggled with this paper. So my guess, for the minimum mark required to get an A, for the 9709 Pure 1 exam, written on Monday the 7th of October, at approximately 2 p.m. CAT. I mean, it depends when you guys write your PM exams, but anyways, that's far from the point. The minimum mark I expect will be required to get an A is, drum roll please, 59 marks. I did also ask ChatGPT just to get an unbiased and more objective opinion, and it thinks that it will be slightly higher. But then again, I think it's not considering how difficult students found the paper. So yeah, I think it will definitely be lower than ChatGPT's 62 prediction. And there's my threshold prediction. I would love to know what you think the threshold would be. Let me know in the comments down below. Honestly, this paper was definitely quite challenging. You're not alone if you struggled with it. Don't stress yourself too much on it. You did your part, you put in the hours of hard work and the hours of studying and now we leave it in God's hands. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my thoughts on the Stats 1 exam next week. Bye bye.